It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Tuesday, the 6th of September. I'm Michael Groff. We are back live once again. Thank you for joining me. Good morning, everybody. If you're participating in our live chat, do keep in mind that I don't have it configured yet to be able to look at that here on my screen while I do this video. Uh, I just sort of started doing this experimental new format yesterday. So I do see all of your comments. I will set it up so I can better see them in the future. I am legally blind after all. So uh, taking a look at those live in this setup that I have right now is going to be difficult. But I know everybody's there. I have seen you. Uh, yesterday we had Marla. We had Tyler, Ryan Seek. Um, my one and only Michelle, of course, was in there as as always. So I am going to look forward to being able to interact with you guys more going forward. And of course, as Clayton asked me yesterday, do I still read the comments section of the video? Yes, absolutely. And I try to respond to each and every one of them. So keep those coming in as well. All right. Now, the big story around here for the next couple of days will be the heat. Temperatures well above average, but signs of changes are looming on the horizon and all eyes are turning toward the south as Hurricane K is churning down there just south of the Baja that will be making its way in our general direction over the next few days. In terms of implications on our weather, probably not a whole lot, except we, for we will see an increase in clouds, cooler temperatures, maybe a few showers. But as always, there is uncertainty to discuss. So let's dive in. We'll get into it here. First, we'll take a look at that almanac from yesterday. 109 degrees, the afternoon high. 88 was the morning low. The normal high, 103, the normal low, 81, and we're almost three inches behind on rainfall for the year, and no sign we're going to catch up on that anytime soon. As we take a look outside right now here at 7.40 a.m., we've got sunny sky in Phoenix. We're sitting at 90 degrees at Sky Harbor, dew point at 52, relative humidity 28%. The winds are light and the barometer is steady. The upper air weather pattern here across the west is dominated by high pressure, an anomalous upper ridge situated just to the north of Arizona. The heights around 597 to 599 decameters. That might just touch 600 decameters, which would be a record strong ridge for the month of September. And ordinarily in that position, as I've talked about for the last week or so, that's a great setup to bring in easterly flow, deeper moisture into the region. Unfortunately, we have a trough out across the Plain States in the southeast U.S., and that's brought down some drier continental air into the source region for where that moisture would come from. So we don't have much in the way of moisture to be drawn in here. So we're just going to stay hot and dry for the next couple of days. But you see down to the south, there is that moisture from K, and that is making its way to the north and northwest. Here's the watch warning map. We have heat as the primary concern out in the west from Southern California all the way up into the Intermountain region. And here in Phoenix, we have an excessive heat warning in effect until 8 p.m. tomorrow. Flood watches and flash flood watches from around Philadelphia up to New York City, Boston, Hartford. The convective outlook for today, a marginal risk of severe storms. Some of those same areas around Dover up to Atlantic City. Maybe we could see a thunderstorm across northern Arizona and up in parts of uh, the Mojave Desert today, but that still remains relatively unlikely. Let's look at the tropics out in the Atlantic Basin. There's three areas of concern, a wave off the African coast. We've got Earl and Danielle. Now, Danielle is a hurricane, but this is just going to loop-de-loo and do a pirouette out there, and eventually this will become a post-tropical system not affecting anybody. Then we've got Earl. Now, this might very well become a major hurricane in time as it uh, scoots east of Bermuda. But again, it's a fish storm. It's going to head up into the North Atlantic and fizzle out. In the East Pacific, of course, there is Hurricane K. And this is a Category 1 storm. And where is it going? Well, the track from the National Hurricane Center has not changed. Still moving up the west coast of the Baja, eventually making more of a left turn as it approaches Southern California, uh, taking a position just south of San Diego by early Saturday morning and then moving off to the north and west. Now, before we completely write off this system and say it's going to be a big nothing for us, which it probably will, but let me remind you that this system is following a somewhat similar track to that of Hurricane Norbert, back in 2014, and that was almost around the same time as now. Remember, September 8th, 2014, Phoenix established its all-time wettest day on record. The airport had 3.3 inches of rain. Some places had as much as 7 inches of rain. Uh, the I-10 turned into the Mississippi River that day. 
And that was all because of moisture. Not a direct hit, but just some moisture from Norbert interacting with a weak upper low here over the southwest. So, you know, we always have to watch these things very carefully. But yes, the more than likely call is this is not going to have a major impact. Looking at modeling uh, from K here, this is off the GFS Ensemble. And the Ensemble mean the black line, the squares there, and that's moving up the west coast. And then it just sort of loops around and becomes just a weak circulation off of northern Baja and southern California. But that still could bring moisture into the region. So obviously this will be a story for us weather-wise for a while. Looking at the precipitation outlook, this is valid through Tuesday morning of next week. Rain amounts in Phoenix, not much to be had. And that's the safe call from the guys at WPC. Uh, more than likely, this will just bring a lot of clouds and soupy air and just sort of a tropical but fairly stable air mass into Arizona. Now, further to the west, across southwest Arizona and southern California, I expect these uh, rain amounts to come up in future forecasts as the system approaches, and it could bring some beneficial rain to SoCal. So we'll watch that. All right, let's go to the models, see what's going on, what the future may hold. To do that, we'll look at the GFS. This is the 06Z run, and this is valid at 2 o'clock this afternoon. There is that incredible ridge sitting to the north of us, just a sprawling 597 to 600 decameter ridge. We are underneath that subsidence or sinking air taking place. So what it means down at the surface today, sunny and very hot highs could be close to 110 degrees. The hottest deserts of southeast California, southwest Arizona, maybe a couple of degrees hotter than that. An isolated storm up north, maybe, but probably not. Tonight, clear sky, overnight lows, upper 70s to middle 80s. And then tomorrow, sunny and hot again, highs 105 to 108. Let's go to Thursday, and this is where the weather starts to change a bit. K is making its way up the west coast of Baja, and moisture is beginning to surge north into the greater southwest. We'll start to see an increase in clouds. Call it partly cloudy. Highs 100 to 104 for Thursday. And maybe a few showers starting to come into Southern California, Southwest Arizona at that time. Maybe holding off till Thursday night. Certainly the day on Friday will be mostly cloudy. And again, a lot of humidity comes in. The initial push of moisture is probably our best chance for any rain out of this system. So maybe a shower, isolated thunderstorm, mostly cloudy sky, high temperatures somewhere in the mid to upper 90s. Then over the weekend, K is going to start to fizzle out. The circulation will decouple, but it's not going to completely die off. It, there will still be an upper level circulation and moisture associated with that, and that's going to continue to stream some moisture into the region. So widely scattered showers and an isolated thunderstorm are still possible here on Saturday and Sunday. Mostly cloudy sky continues and high temperatures below average with all the clouds and humidity being higher. So highs somewhere in the mid 90s. As we go to Monday, the circulation is still out there just lurking around waiting for somebody to pick it up. And so an isolated to perhaps widely scattered shower thunderstorm activity could still be possible here. But high temperatures will remain a little below average. Going to a week from today, this is Tuesday the 13th. And now we see troughing beginning to dig in here across the west. A baggy trough at that, but still enough to pick up K and move it off to the east or the remnant circulation thereof and bring it into the southwest. So still maybe some isolated showers around from that. But with westerly flow, we know that that is going to start to dry us out. But look, the upper heights are down. Troughing is now dominant. And that means temperatures will be at or maybe just a shade below normal for us. So that's great news. But it is September, so keep in mind that's not going to last. Looking out 10 days, this is Thursday the 15th, a 591 ridge now building back over the southern plains and expanding toward the southwest. And if that's right, we would be warmer, but still very dry. Looking at rainfall for Phoenix off of the European Ensemble. Now, most of the members in the Ensemble here out through the 20th of September indicate that we do have some probability of precipitation. But I would say that it would be optimistic to even think we'll get a third of an inch, which is the ensemble mean right now. More than likely, not much to be had. But, hey, things can change. All right, looking at temperatures off the National Blend of Models. Yeah, hot today and tomorrow, and then maybe not making the century mark over the weekend, and even next week just barely scraping to that 100-degree mark as signs are looking more likely that we are seeing an end to those 110-degree days and now we're just looking for the last triple digit day of the year. But that, my friends, is still a ways off.
Uh, and see, there's there's me hitting the wrong button again. I meant to hit this. And that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. That's the beauty of live video, live broadcast, folks. You never know what's going to happen. All right. On my next video back here tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for watching and joining me. I really do appreciate it. All of your comments, your questions, suggestions, keep those coming in. You can like, subscribe, share. That really helps out as well. Music fans, check it out. It is available 24-7, 365. Talking about my streaming station. It's called KMGX. We play a ton of music. We have a lot of fun with that. Myself and the Asian sensation, my one and only Michelle, are involved in the programming and operation of that station. So do, do yourself a favor and check it out. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. We will be back here again live tomorrow morning. We'll try to get a consistent time going as well. Uh, sometime between 7 and 8 every morning does seem like a good time, uh, but we'll try to nail that down, and I will let you know. And now, if I remember which, uh, which hot key I have here, yes, we'll see you tomorrow. Here is a look at your forecast.